Oh, it sure is the football hour, and it's time, and we do it again, I don't know, three, four years, but we've known each other for, well, longer than Tom Brady's career. That's saying something. He's been doing it a while. I'm Sean Salisbury, football hour along with my guy, Lorenzo Neal. You see and hear his name and hear his analysis up and down the lineup here at 95-7 a game, and I believe he's a Hall of Famer, and uh, he is a Hall of Famer from the university. And uh, Fresno State, and here he is with me uh, on 95.7 The Game. Lo, you look good, brother. Great to have you on. And we are at it again, although the start wasn't what the Niners wanted. The start of you and I together, I'm glad we're here, brother. Uh, you know what? That, that's what I'm about. It's about you and I starting another year. Is That's it. I mean, it's not the start we wanted for the season because we're going to have all the talking heads and everyone's going to say that it's raining, it's all done, it's all go, the season may be over, go ready to go to Jimmy G. But I'm just glad you and I can talk some X and O's and put everything in perspective because that's what it's right. going to need. Yeah, Loaf, his third start as a 49er in Trey Lance. Um, I know that was, well, the truth is that's your kind of weather, brother. I mean, that's a, the grinded out, find somebody to look up. And both teams had to play in it. So is it fair? Statistics, I, I, low to be honest with you, I could care less about the passing statistics. I care when they made plays at the right time and how they got through. We'll get to injuries. We'll get to penalties. Um, is it fair to make excuses for either quarterback in a game like that? Or is it just another game and you've got to find a way, grind it out, you don't want to hear the excuse? You don't want to hear the excuse. You you got to find a way to grind it out. Uh, you're going to have excuses, but like you said, both teams had to play in it. Both teams had to play in the bad weather. It's a situation where the Niners are a better ball team. Niners have more weapons from top to bottom. In this game, they should have won. You look at you look at it. To me, Sean, it's it's bottom line. You played this game long enough. I played this game long enough, and you know the number one reason why this team lost. It had nothing to do with X's and O's. It had to do with self-inflicted wounds, those Dorn penalties. 99 yards compared to 28 yards. That's 70-some yards in hidden yards. That was the ball game, in my opinion, and one busted play by the quarterback able to scramble and make something happen. You know, Lo, you make a great point. That 70 extra yards difference or whatever it is, that 70-plus yards difference. The, the, the alarming thing about it is that's a full possession. The final yes. score was 19. That's a possession. That's a possession and, and a score. And you look at their first half, you know, they're up 7 nothing, but to give up 19 points in the second half, and I, I listen, I, I'm okay. I control it. I can't control but I, I'm never okay. So I don't care if it's game one. That's why you have off seasons and preseason, and self-inflicted wounds are a pain in the ass, and it ends up costing you. It doesn't matter. I know this. You kill yourself with turnovers and penalties or – the quarterback doesn't play well. One of the three, and if you have somebody else on the other team not penalizing himself as much and having a better second half, they're the team that usually wins. And unfortunately, a usually disciplined 49er team left that one on the table. And one that if we went through the schedule at the beginning of the year, we say, well, there's a guarantee, right? Even though there's none in sports, we felt sure. like that was a no-brainer when you look at the rosters because most people have the Bears as, as a bottom five team this year. Yeah, they, they do. And, and Sean, what do you say? Because I, I totally understand because they will look at the Bears and say, hey, this team may win five, four games. But there's right. a team over in Houston where you're at. Look what Levy Smith was able to do off. You see what I'm saying? Everyone talked about the organization, their their GM, what they do. This is a token hire. Let's be real. Let's talk about it. And, and, and look what they were able to do and beat a pretty good team. So when you think about football, like you said, you got to go out there every day and play. So what now? Do you bench Aaron Rodgers? Last I sec, he didn't look great. Will you bench him? What about Tannehill and since you know Tennessee Titans? You know, have an opportunity to win that game. Giants, will you bench him now? I mean, I guess I guess you, Mac Jones is done. I guess Trevor yeah, Lawrence exactly. is done. Th Carson Wentz is now the thank MVP you. of the league. Right. That's the, that right. part, Sean. That part that people don't. That's that's why I love talking to you because it, it it's so hard. And like everyone's okay. Do you want Mac Jones? Did he win you that? Look what happened to him yesterday. Yeah, like you said, Carson, all these players, all these quarterbacks, and no one's saying, that. look at the kid in Arizona. I mean, Kyle there's Murray. a guy, you just paid him a lot of money, and, and I, he didn't he, look. He missed, some, no, he missed some blitz stuff and protection yes. stuff. And then you go back to, remember the guy who's getting dogged all off season long low? Tua, they're crushing him. He yeah. completes, what, 70%, <laughs> gets him a victory. So, <laughs> hey, man, hey, first of all, it's a long season. Second of all, yes. the position ain't easy. But it's true, the scrutiny on Trey Lance. And, Lowell, we've been doing this, I mean, since he's been in the all last year, we heard it, right? I mean, up right. and down, up and down. Listen, I think it's a great insurance policy to have Jimmy. 
And in truth, Trey Lance is not in position to say, well, I'm frustrated that Jimmy's in the building. Dude, you just got to go play, take care of your business. Sure. They wouldn't have given up all those first-round picks if they didn't love you. And, and that's just the, it's the nature of the competitive business. But they ran into a, a hungry Bears team. And the thing that stuck out the most to me by, well, you look at, just, uh, at Fields on the other side, is that they were able to capitalize on three late drives in a row, low, and right off what you said, penalties. Penalties. I'm telling you, penalty. it's like a tennis player hitting it into the net on unforced air on a regular basis. Controllable stuff. You don't control it. The difference between the best team in a league and the 32nd team in a league, and some think the 49ers are a Super Bowl caliber team and most think the Bears will be picking in the top five, is quarterback play, the stupid penalties, about six to eight plays a game, and maybe three or four other players that make plays during the game. And that was the difference in this game because rosters, there's not a comparison. And things changed when, you know, when they lost the starting running back and when he went out and got hurt and they had to go. It seemed like it affected, you know, the, the Debo game play. Uh, when Eli- yeah, when Elijah was Mitchell. hurt, it, it right. changed. What a bummer for him, too, right? What, what a friggin' right. bummer. But it seemed like it changed the whole energy of the way Kyle was formationing and doing the things he does. It, it did. Uh, it, it did. And I think, too, Sean, we live in a world, and you know just as well as I do, everyone wants it right now. <laughs> and they want it. You look at politics. You look at everything. So let something go bad. Oh, blame them. Oh, blame right. this. Well, it, it's look at right now. We're in a situation that you know who everyone wants to blame for everything. It's Trey. It's right. just because it's just because it's the nature of the position. Because you had an okay quarterback at that position, and now everyone go to Jimmy. It's look at look how quick. And what was everyone saying last year? You and I was like, no, get Jimmy, Jimmy out. Stay this. Get it, yeah, and, or get and, Jimmy and, out. It was yeah, one extreme or the other, right? Thank you. And you and I was like, look, Jimmy's more seasoned right now. Jimmy's the best for the team. Trey's not ready. And now you look at this team with this offensive line, I think it's more than just Trey, in my opinion, in the, on the first game. And the yeah, weather right. has a lot to do with it. I know you know There's that, the, John. Oh, of course. Well, you can't. You know, usually in games when it's a little bit wet, you know, like the, it's, a, it's, a, it's raining, but it's, you got on right. turf. Or you're on grass, but it's not that deluge that they saw in Chicago. Right. You can't. It's usually an offensive advantage. I've seen some of the bigger offensive performances in games because you know where you're going. They don't, right, on cuts. But when it's that bad, you can't even put your foot in the ground and make a cut. So while I'm not making excuses for either team, it just becomes all you have to do. It's a gutted out survivor win or law. You've got to just hang in there and hope that you turn it over less, that you're a little more disciplined, that you can deal with distractions a little bit better than somebody else can. And, and quite frankly, the Bears were better at it yesterday. Yesterday. Which leads me to this. I, Lo, I, I get so frustrated. And knowing, and, and, me, and I'm not saying just about fans or media. Everybody gets caught up into it because there's a lot of smart fans. We get them calling into this show at 888-957-9570. We do. But here, the Lo, here's the thing. The, the, you mentioned the urgency. The, I mean, oh, it's just the... the Instant gratification, I, I, how hard it is to do it great. We try to compare these guys to Mahomes and Brady instead of the, he started three games. He started three friggin' <laughs> games in his career. I'm not making excuses. He's got to get better, and that's part of it. But damn, I, I just I don't know. And I, I saw with Dave Mills. Dave Mills played good yesterday. Solid football. They're ready. Oh, heat. We're got, we can't wait till next year's first round pick. I'm like, guys. <laughs> let, 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 let them play their way through some difficulties. We'll get an opportunity. I, 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 it's, it's fascinating to me. And I just think, okay, in somebody else's job, think about our broadcast job or what you know, our, our, our producer or what Sterling does or what Cam does is our technical, you know, take sure. care of uh, operating the board. Think about your third day on the job or your third red light goes on and you've got to have a camera in your face. I about pissed myself, okay, when it happened. <laughs> and that, that was post-NFL career. Right. So I right. just don't know what, the expectations we place on that position. We don't do it to the right tackle. We don't do it to the nose guard. Three games into their career, we give them a chance to grow. And they got help Absolutely. from their defensive tackle buddy. So right. while we're all critical and it's okay to be critical, we got to have some damn common sense judging the position, <laughs> and, and, and especially in that kind of weather. Right. That was that was 
a game that you cannot put any stake in. Now, here's the deal. Like you said, both teams had the play in it. We're not making, and I hope your listeners know that we're not making an excuse for Trey or the Niners. Period. At all. Right. But it is a different feel when you're playing. Do you think that's why the game point spread was 37 points? Do you think the Vegas knew that it wasn't going to be a fireworks game? You put those two teams on a different field, different track, and guess what? I think the Niners beat them eight out of ten times. I don't. I, I think that those. You look at Phils. He made two plays with his legs, you know, and got out of trouble and was able to throw a ball to a wide open guy because he's bro- a broken play. You take that play away. This is a different ball game. You put them on a regular turf where guys can pass rush and do this stuff because they made them one dimensional and they jumped on them to know I, that that game's a different game. It wasn't a different game though. No, they should have won that game in spite of the you like you said. The Chicago Bears, they played with a little bit more want to, they played with a little more have to, and they wanted that game, and they found a way to win. That's football. Yeah, lo- yeah when that when that number came out, that over under it, you know, 37 or 38 and a half points, whatever it was, you knew that's the lowest one that they didn't expect much at all from these teams. And you ta- and Fields did what he it, it, it did at Ohio State. Made some like Trey does. Made some plays, extending plays. Big physical kid who can get out of pocket. They just made more plays. And low with that in mind, I, you know, I, I go through this and I start to go through a checklist of how you fix it and how you better it. And I'm with you. Listen, when it comes to just talent on the field, and we can sit here and say, well, if they were on turf and it was a great day, but it would have been an advantage for them. They were better. I think the greatest thing for for the Chicago Bears yesterday was when you wake up to that inclement weather because what it does, it neutralizes what the 49ers do best. Debo on the edge, Debo inside. Trey Lance doing all the things, even coming out of the pocket trying to put your foot in the ground to where you can get outside and break contain. Elijah Mitch, I mean, tackles trying to get their footing. We know that Trent Williams can block everybody. All right, they had a a couple times tough go, he and McGlinchey. I get all that. So how do we fix it, Low? Is it just a simple case of it's one game, you got Seattle next week, you, you, you got a message sent to you early, and things will change? Or did you see anything that was so overly disciplined, you say, we got a coaching communication with the players problem? I don't think we should be making that big a deal over this loss. I don't. Uh, nor do I. I. I think that if you said, hey, Low, point out one glaring thing that I think that, right. that I'd like, like to get fixed in a fix in a hurry because I think it predicates... The, the, the success of this team and the quarterback. And you know that. It's winning the trenches. I don't know if this offensive line is solid enough. I don't know because you look at McGlinchey and Trent can't block everybody. You know and I know you played quarterback. When you're a quarterback, you got speed rushers. You want to step up in the pocket. But if you don't have a center and guard position is not solidified, quarterbacks, Tom Brady's one of the best at stepping up. If you can't step up into a clean pocket, that's trouble. And if those guards in in the center can, and you're just starting to struggle there, it's going to be tough. And when you can't get pushed on the run game, for the front side can't become the back side, we're at that outside zone. So when you do that outside zone, the defensive end, when he crashes, if he can just stay home because the running game, they can stout enough, and he can stay home and cut off all the bootlegs and say, nope, go up the field because we're going to keep trying to make him play in the phone booth. This can be trouble for this team. So that's if I just and I don't know because the field, the footing, but this right. offensive line can be a concern because you have this Niner team. One thing that everyone says: What did they do better than anybody in the league? Run the ball. No can question. they? My question, to you, Sean, can is this team? Can they run the ball this year? Is it too early to say? Uh, do they yeah, got the guys? Well, for me, uh, listen. Now the question is, and we we take it for granted. Low Lo, Lorenzo Neal, Sean Salisbury, ninety-five-seven a game here with a football hour along with Sterling Bennett and Cam Williams here on a Monday night. We'll be here every Monday for an hour. It's never enough time, but we're grateful to be doing this. And, Lo, you, you make a hell of a point of can they. We get spoiled, man. We get spoiled because since Mike Shanahan's been doing it, we don't care who the body is. We expect them to run the ball because they always do, whether it's Raheem Mostert whether it's Elijah Mitchell, whether it's Debo Samuel, whether it's Terrell Davis back when Mike had him. It's just, you know what I'm saying? And, Lo, sure. you know this certain systems. But listen, I can die, and, and let's not discount the fact that one of the great run geniuses in all of football is Mike McDaniel, who is now the head coach in Miami. You will see his impact, forma- formations and all the things they're doing in Miami. Mike was great at it. doesn't mean Kyle can't. But when you take an element away from that, mm. there's obviously, uh, think about it. I mean, we always put it's it on the point. player. 
It's we great put point. Out there, but when you take away a comfort zone, now it doesn't work that way all the time, but some guys just, and Mike McDaniel was like, he can finish Kyle's, I mean, McDaniels can finish, uh, Mike McDaniel can finish Kyle Shanahan's sentences, right? And so that run game, that the flow he gets in, now, Kyle, I mean, you've got to replace somebody else, and it happens. But they've had some guys going with, with Salah, and then you lose. I mean, which is a good thing. Kyle brings up a good assistant coaches, and what do they do? They go get jobs elsewhere, and they take some of the staff with them. Mike McDaniel was worth, I mean, he's going to do a great job in Miami, but he was a run game mastermind. Does that mean that Kyle isn't a run game mastermind? Not at all. But you still, it's like when you take Devontae Adams away from the Packers. Showed yesterday, <laughs> didn't it? Looked like Aaron Rodgers had to babysit a little. I'm always fascinated when people say, oh, you can lose the best receiver in football. Now, I understand in Kansas City without Tyreek Hill, Mahomes still look like Superman. But that's not, the, that's not normal, right? So, Lo, it just blows my mind. Well, you take a guy away. Mike McDaniel, his impact will be felt. Now, I don't know if it's one game or two games, but they're going to have to pick that back up because Mike was genius at it. Now, with that, low, we're spoiled because we expect this from them every single friggin' game to dominate the run game. But every now and again, when you keep having injury set back, you're going to take a step back and get back into it. And we really couldn't tell. You can't get through a hole with that weather lined no. up in the eye formation. Right. or yeah. You just can't. The hole opens and closes too much quicker. Next week will be a better barometer against Seattle in normal weather and the rest of it. But, and it's not an excuse. You've got to find a way to win, and Chicago did. And we'll get to that in a second because I want to ask you about the second half of that game. But I do think they – I don't even think it needs fix, low. I think that the perfect storm, and no pun intended, for Chicago yesterday. Sure. To where it did. It was like a 12th man on the field neutralizing what they do. And in truth, Chicago was a little mentally tougher in the second half. They just were. Whether it doesn't mean over the season, but in the second half of that game, they were mentally tougher and they dealt with distractions better and didn't cost themselves on penalties. It extended drives and gave them those scores, you know, scoring points in the three straight drives. So I'll ask you this, Low: Are teams that underperform in second halves, we only got one game to judge on, and that's what we're going to judge on. Yes, the 49ers will be able to run the football and they will be able to block it. But do you judge one half of football or, or a second half of football and say, is there a character problem? When I say character, not internal, I'm talking about a football uh, moxie or confidence. You shouldn't let a team do that to you in the second half, right? Or is it just no the question. aberration because of where it happened in the, and under the circumstances? No, you saw Chicago when they went up and they started making it a game. You saw their spirits. You saw the players no on doubt. the sideline. You saw them bouncing. You saw the Niners looking around. And no, 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 no. You're, you're absolutely 1,000% spot on. You saw Chicago team say, guess what? We're whipping your ass. And you saw a Niners team start catching. You saw them turn into Mike Tyson that they were delivered, delivered, and they ran out of gas, and now they made it a fight. And once the, once the Niners got uncomfortable, you saw Chicago say, okay, they, they, they felt it. And you saw the Niners start pressing more and more and pressing, missing tackles, overrunning holes, over-pursuing Penalty after penalty, given the given Chicago life, Chicago start punching back. Chicago said, "We belong." They let you let a team stick around, and anything you let a person stick around, a turtle in the hair, you know what happened. They gonna have a chance. You let in the National Football League. I don't care any given Sunday if you around, they can find a way to beat you. Yeah, it's a great Lorenzo Neal. I'm Sean Salisbury here on ninety five seven Game the Football Hour. We'll be here every Monday night during the football season, unless something, a basketball game and we got to adjust. We'll always adjust to if there's a world champion that needs adjusting to. We'll do that, but meeting the NBA team. But right now we got football <laughs> on a football hour. And, and Lo, you make such an awesome point about this, and I'm a big believer in this. You know, motivational speeches don't do much for me pregame, but I do believe in things that get you going and trigger points, right, in your game. And I do also believe that underdogs who have been told they're not any good, if you start to believe it, then it becomes a self-fulfilling pride. It just does. It, 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 I, I'm, I'm a big believer in the psychological part of it. You still got to be talented and execute. But when you let a team, think about college football over the weekend, Low, Kansas at West Virginia, double-digit underdogs hung around, take care of their business on the road. Marshall at Notre Dame, heavy 20-plus point underdogs, eliminate Notre Dame from any chance. They're, they've lost two in a row this year, one last done. year. They're done. Marshall beats them on the road underdog. Uh, Washington State waltzes into Wisconsin and takes care of a top 20 team in their building, and they kick their ass. And then you go to 
uh, Appalachian State waltzing into A&M, a top 6-7 team, and they gave them eight first downs every single. So what I'm saying is, and all those teams, guess what they did, Low? They hung around in the fourth quarter, and then they started to get to the point where it says, wait a minute now. Well, you guys are letting us hang around? <laughs> oh, okay. And then all it takes is a holding penalty, a ball that was blocked or kicked out of bounds, and the ball comes out to the, you know, a, a, on a bad kickoff, or a, a flip the field punt, any of those things. And now you could take a steak team and turn them into a hamburger because they make a mistake under duress. <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? And, and, I, no and that happened a lot. And, and the truth is, the 49ers are better than the Bears. They weren't yesterday. Yes. You let a team that's not as talented as you hang around, and they're grown-ass men. And I know we got to go to break, but give me 30 seconds. But when grown-ass men hang around, they will respond, and you saw it happen with the Bears. This is a wake-up call quickly in September for the 49ers. Yeah, it happened early. So let's see how you deal with it. How do you deal with adversity? The biggest thing for the Niners is they got to say, you know, yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today is the present. Live in the present. It's a gift. How are you going to take care of today? That's my man Lorenzo Neal. This segment sponsored by Anova International Incorporated. All right, up next, and the phone number is 888-957-9570. Low Neal and I are going to discuss one is who does now shoulder the chore in the running back? How much does Debo touch it? Two is with Jimmy Garoppolo and the presence of Jimmy, uh, of Jimmy does, it, does it mean anything to you? And what if the Cowboys want Garoppolo? What do you do? All that and more next, 95.7 a game. This is Sean Salisbury along with Lorenzo Neal. Brought to you by On Deck Small Business Loans. When you own a small business, sometimes you need funds fast. So go to ondeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. On Deck makes it easy to apply in minutes. Apply for your loan today at ondeck.com. Hi, I'm Aaron, owner of California Deluxe Windows. Ever notice? When your neighbors get new windows, there is a large black eye of broken stucco, uneven plaster, and even mismatched paint. At California Deluxe Windows, we never leave a ring around the window. Why? Because we are one of the only companies in California who custom crafts every window and door to your home's exact measurements. Almost everyone else on the radio is a distributor. They grab a window from a warehouse, break open your walls, shove it in, and patch things up. At California at Deluxe Windows, we take pride in our work. Our installation technique is so precise, we do not break your stucco. Your house could be covered with potato chips and we wouldn't crack one. Call now and for a limited time, you get 30% off your entire order and 24 months of interest-free financing. 800-874-3600. 800-874-3600. That's 800-874-3600. California Deluxe Windows. Windows engineered for life. Certain terms and conditions apply. CSLB number 7 Seven four five one eight. The gamer, the call maker, the experience chaser. What if you could be everything all at once? Galaxy Z Fold 4 is powered by the Snapdragon processor for world-class performance and lightning fast speed to turbocharge your multitasking. How about an expansive edge-to-edge -edge screen for immersive gaming, hands-free video calls with flex mode, and multi-window view to use up to three apps at the same time? With Galaxy Z Fold 4, do more with ease and make multitasking a breeze. Available now at Samsung.com. Attention veterans, if you were stationed at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, you and your family may be victims of toxic water poisoning. You could be awarded financial compensation for your suffering. Cancers, birth defects, deadly illnesses have all been linked to the contaminated water. Congress is now holding the government accountable, but you must act now. Get your free case review. Call True Law at 877-560-8550. 877-560-8555 or visit sickvets.com that's sickvets.com every search you make every click you take they'll be watching you are you tired of being tracked online there's a simple solution DuckDuckGo it's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine web browser one-click data clearing email protection and more all for free Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with the push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Come into Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event. Take advantage of factory direct prices, one-of-a-kind opportunities, special pricing on floor models, and convenient financing. And save on new appliances from trusted brands like Mila, Bosch, Electrolux, LG, and Maytag. Visit Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill for their fall clearance sale event 
September 23rd through September 25th for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. At Left Coast Buyers, we buy properties all over California. If you own a house or an apartment building and want to sell it fast at a great price, call us at 925-434-5000. We can pay cash and close in as little as seven days. We buy properties in any condition, any price range. Do you own a property that is run down and needs thousands of dollars in repairs? Are you out of time, money, and energy? Are you looking for an easy way to get top dollar for your property and sell on your terms and timeline? Well, call Left Coast Buyers now at 925-434-5000. We buy divorce houses, inherited houses. We even buy vacant houses and abandoned houses. Do you have a tenant who hasn't paid? Are you behind on property taxes, mortgage payments, or even facing a foreclosure? Even if you're just nervous about capital gains or an upcoming recession, we've seen it all. So if you or someone you know owns a property and needs to sell, call Left Coast Buyers at 925-434-5000. That's 925-434-5000. Other banks go out of their way to make redeeming credit card rewards needlessly complicated, like how they require minimums or force you to use your rewards before reaching some arbitrary expiration date. But Discover isn't like that. With Discover, you can redeem your rewards for cash in any amount, at any time. So you'll never have to jump through hoops. Unless you're like a trapezist, then by all means, go right ahead. Learn more at discover.com slash redeem rewards. Terms apply. Ad paid for by the Centennial Group. Attention Marines, military personnel, families, and contractors who were stationed at Camp Lejeune. Were you present at Camp Lejeune between August 1953 and December of 1987? You may be entitled to significant compensation. For nearly 34 years, those in the Marine Corps base Camp Lejeune were exposed to contaminated drinking water, resulting in devastating injuries, including several forms of cancer, adverse birth outcomes, Parkinson's disease, and more. North Carolina's procedural laws have prevented victims from getting the justice they deserve. But passage of the Camp Lejeune Justice Act of 2022 would allow you or a loved one to file lawsuits seeking compensation for illnesses and injuries linked to the toxic water. Call today for your free consultation. 800-631-3019. Let our experienced attorneys fight to get you the compensation you deserve. And you pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call 800-631-3019. That's 800-631-3019. Again, 800-631-3019. In Berkeley, partly cloudy overnight, lows in the high 50s. Weather brought to you by Pfizer and BioNTech. Whether it's the news, the traffic, the weather, or your COVID-19 vaccinations, it's important to stay up to date. Now, back to the football hour with Sean Salisbury and Lo Neal on 95.7 The Game. As well as Sterling and Cam as well, making sure we're being able to get out to you guys and you can hear us. It is the football hour. It's Sean Salisbury along with Lorenzo Neal, my man, the great Lorenzo Neal. will be with you every Monday night uh, throughout the season. And hopefully it's a long season, meaning a long one with a lot of... Uh, a lot of games in January as well for the 49ers. Two things I want to hit on hard on this one. And, low to just finish up what you were talking about when it was the running game. And remember, a full-strength Kittle on a normal surface is going to help that run game because I think he's as dominant an edge blocker as there is in a league. I do. So oh, nice. with, that in, yeah, with that in mind, low. Let, let me start here. The running game. Elijah Mitchell going to be out. You know Debo Samuel can play it from there, but they're not going to give him 25 carries. And as I believe Shanahan had said that Ty Davis Price, Jordan Mason going to have to grow up in a hurry. And But we expect them to. And why, Low? Because it's the run game, right? It's the 49ers. It's what they do. It is. And that's what fans have to realize. It's not necessarily the player. Sometimes it's a system. And the system that Cal Shanahan has is it's very, very running back friendly. You look at what the running back's been able to do over the years in this type of system. You know, just plug in guys and guys usually have success. Raheem Moster, the list goes on what guys have been doing, just average guys. And look at their look at after they leave if they don't have that system. It's a reason why Raheem Moster went to Miami, like you alluded to, because Shanahan's boy 
they left and said, I know what he can do in this type of right. offense. So you look at those things like you just alluded to. Shanahan said, telling those guys, you better grow up and you got to grow up in a hurry. Because if not, I'm going to tell you right now, you know what tomorrow's Tuesday. You know they're going to be running up. They're going to be bringing in some running backs. No question tomorrow to see what they have. There is no question about it. And I've got a, I heard a proposed situation. And I'm going to propose it to you in a second. We'll get to, but guys, uh, we got the we got uh, Kyle Shanahan on on Trey Lance's performance. Hopefully, Sterling, I've given you guys enough opportunity to get there and Cam. But uh, let me know when you guys got it because uh, Kyle Shanahan mentioned hey, Kyle Han- Shanahan had mentioned, and we always do overreact to the great stuff. We put guys in the Hall of Fame after one game, and then we overreact to the bad stuff or games who struggle because oh my gosh, we got to. You know, a veteran quarterback on the bench waiting, and boy, Trey Lance, in harsh weather, wasn't a superstar. Slow your roll. Here's what Kyle Shanahan had to say about Trey Lance's performance. Uh, You know, I thought he did some good things coming out. You know, I thought everything was pretty smooth from the beginning. You know, I would have loved to hit him on that one down in the red zone that we had Croft, but he came back and made a big play the next series. thought he did some good things, but the way it got there at the end, um, everything kind of fell apart there. It tells me, and that's Kyle Shanahan, low that that Kyle saw some things he liked, but also saw some things that are going to have to improve in regular weather and late in a game that matters that Trey would like to have back. And no question, because Kyle Shanahan saw the good, and he's going to say, "Give the guy an add a boy," but he goes, "Look, I saw it fall apart. Fall, saw it fall apart with with Trey. Saw it fall apart with the offensive line, defense, his whole team, the team as a whole." They wasn't consistent. This was a game, like you said, you looked at the schedule and you said the Chicago Bears is an okay team. They're going to give the Niners, we know the Niners struggle with mobile quarterbacks. A la, look at what they did when Russell Wilson was in Seattle. Sean, think about when with the guy in with, with over in Arizona, think about how they, it's hard when... I'm not hearing low guys. Okay, yeah, I, I, low cut out on me, but I think you know he's hard talking about. He's talking about the mobility of quarterbacks and the trouble they put defenses in, and it is difficult. And you know, when watching that game yesterday, I, I hear the comments about about Jimmy Garoppolo and well, would it have been better for them if he was playing? Well, of course we're going to speculate. Low, I don't know if you're back with us, but speculate on that. But you're right. You were finishing your thoughts on how you defend a guy that's that mobile. Just mobile quarterbacks. Yeah, and then that's the Niners have struggled. That's been their Achilles heel, their kryptonite the whole last couple of years. Mobile quarterbacks giving them problems. Yeah, Lorenzo Neal, Sean Salisbury, 95, yeah, 95-7 the game. Yeah, I got you. I'm hearing you just fine, bud. I got you 95-7 the game here on the football okay. hour along with Sterling and Cam. Um, rolling here along. Okay, Lo, with this in mind, Jimmy Garoppolo, they had mentioned, do you think a, d- does a veteran help in a situation like yesterday? You hear all those comments. I know how I feel. We can't, you can't keep leaning on that when you've turned a football team over to Trey Lance unless he plays his way out of the position. I thought yesterday was the aberration. I don't think it's fair to Trey Lance or a football team to say, well, had Jimmy had been there, we'd have won. If my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. I don't think it's fair to the football team to keep doing that, <laughs> at least early, right? Give him at least early. Yeah. You, you, you have to give him a chance. And I think that you look at the elements that were there yesterday. What Jimmy had made that third and 12 where Trey Lance, quarterback draw, picks up 13 Great yards. Point. Great Does point. Jimmy get out of the problems that he was able to do last three day? I saw some plays yesterday that Jimmy not necessarily was made. They always talked about can Jimmy throw the long ball? Would they even dialed up that play to you know the tight end? Yeah, he over overshot him, but you know what? If that's Kittle, does Kittle run underneath and get that ball? Is Kittle's been practicing that? So there's a lot of things the unknown, like you alluded to the weather. And I don't know if Jimmy plays in that game with the weather, with the pocket, with the line, inability to run the ball. Once Mitchell, if Mitchell goes down, now J- you can pin your ears back and you can come at Jimmy. You can do a lot of things. So I and now and still Jimmy wouldn't have had his tight end and Kittle. Does he? I, I don't. I don't know, Sean. I don't know. Amen. Amen. I, no, Lo, you do know. 
And I and like I said, you know, we we both believe in Jimmy. I do, and I'm going to get to that point here about the overall landscape yes. of that position in the league. And we do believe in him, but the spectacular was there. You're exactly right. Okay, if I rob Peter, I got to pay Paul. So maybe Jimmy controls the ball a little better because he's a veteran. But is Jimmy going to extend the plays that Trey Lance did? Is he going to like you hit it perfect? And when a line's not going real good, you sometimes got to have a guy that can step out of stuff that you can't quite that the. That the that the guy who's a pocket guy is not going to step out of much. So that is a great counterpoint to those who say, oh, we win if Garoppolo's there. Well, guess what? He's not, so you got to go on. They're 0-1, and it's a great test for them to get back at it. And if you're a smart team, which they are, you learn from these things. I learned more getting my ass handed to me than I ever did winning 42-7, to Low, I did. And so, and I think most teams do and most great competitors do because you look at it harder because there's a sense of urgency that goes in. There just is. And this team's had to have one considering some changes they made. All right, I'm going to propose something to you. First off, I'll say this. The quarterback backup position in this league is a disrespected position. I'm going to tell you why. Because they're come, think about Bridgewater when he was there with Drew Brees and they covered themselves for five games and won five of them. Think about what the Buffalo Bills have done. If you lose just for a minute a game or two, Josh Allen, as much as he runs, you know what they've done? They got themselves Case Keenum who can win you five games and been a starter in the league. Even Andy Dalton in New Orleans if something happens to a Jameis Winston. There's about five to six to seven teams that – Put themselves the good, protect themselves. Well, even the Vikings, who drafted Kellen Mann in the third round, had Sean Mannion, said, Nope, we're going to go trade for Nate Mullins, who was a former 49er and then a Raider, and get a guy with some experience that Kevin O'Connell called a brilliant game against the Packers. In case something goes on, we got a guy who can at least hold it down for a couple weeks. Well, right now, the questions in Dallas are. Do they have a guy that can hold it down? This is a Super Bowl caliber team. This is Dak Prescott's team. Jerry talking about, you know, that this is a Super Bowl talent-wise, and it's Dak's going to elevate. Well, Dak's hurt now, and he's going to be out six to eight weeks. So they didn't cover themselves. I don't know if Cooper Rush can hold it down. I damn well know Case Keenum could. I know Jimmy Garoppolo can, and we'll get into that point. So for me... I think we get to where it's like you just assume that the backup isn't going to have to play. But if you're a championship team, you damn well better cover your ass. I, I can't even if you got to pay a little bit more to keep Case Keenum or trade for him from Cleveland to get him to Buffalo. So here we are. The Cowboys now are desperate. Jimmy Garoppolo takes a pay cut. I, I'm telling you, the most secure backup position in the league's in San Francisco right now because you got a Super Bowl guy who's been to two NFC Championship games who. You're not going to bother him by not giving him a lot of reps. He's a pro. Now Dallas is reeling. A pro. Okay, I'm the Cowboys, low, and I call you up, and you're John Lynch, and I say, I'll give you Ezekiel Elliott and a second-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. Desperate team calls for desperate overpay if you still think you're a playoff team. And Kyle Shanahan has said, we listen to everybody. And why wouldn't you? Answer the damn phone. You never know. If I'm the 49ers low, I am holding the Cowboys hostage if they make that call. So with Elijah Mitchell out, some people think Pollard's a better back than Zeke at that stage of their career. If you're the 49ers and I offer a second-round pick and I offer Zeke Elliott, are you trading Jimmy Garoppolo? You are John Lynch. It's a cl- You know what? John Lynch, he's in a tough situation because... Uh, for definitely for Pollard because yeah he's younger because Zeke's got a lot of tread you know a lot of tire a lot of, of rubber's right. been on that road so I might look at Pollard and say give me give me Pollard and you know he's an un, he's un, he hasn't shown that he can do it durable he's been always had Zeke but you give me him in a second I make that trade I make that trade if I'm Are the Niners scared, then though, I'm uh, serious because. I was going to say, hello, I didn't mean to interrupt. Are, are, you scared, scared yeah. that, are you scared that, uh, not, when I say scared, a little uptight making that are trade? Are you scared Trey's going to get hurt? Yeah, or Tra- that you need him at you, some point yeah. for a game or two. Right. You're a little nervous as a playoff caliber team. And you're giving him to a team that you may very well, damn well see in, the, in January, possibly, see. if you give him, Jimmy. The Niners are in a great position, though, right now because they got that Agreed. guy locked up and there's going to be some quarterback and he's one of the better ones and you got him now under contract and you don't have to pay him first, you know, 24, 25, 30 million bucks. I think the Niners can get more. If, if the quarterback position continues to struggle and see a lot, I think you get that, that first round pick that you've been looking for, maybe that early second. I think it's, I think you can get it now. 
Yeah, low, 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 Neil, Sean Salisbury here on 95.7 The Game. Low, you're so right. Think about where we were in April and May and June with this. With, okay, Trey Lance, well, should you beat Jimmy? Jimmy's been to two NFC Championship games. Are we really willing to let him go? Well, the money's too much, but his shoulders hurt, so you can't get the right value from all those things that went on, and then we get into camp, and you're thinking somebody's going to trade, and then he's willing to restructure, and you get him for six and a half million bucks. You're like, what the hell? What a bargain for a two-time NFC Championship guy, and he's about four throws away against Kansas City in the fourth quarter from being taking Mahomes' Super Bowl from him, right? That was Jimmy had a chance, and he just he missed a few. We know all that. That's history. But it still looms when you're thinking, how, where's the best protection of my team? So look how it's now flipped 180 wow. degrees. you got the best backup in the league. You do. You do. He's the best backup yes. quarterback in the league because he's a starter, and he's better than – he. Let's, uh, there's not 32 starters in the league better than him. Circumstances. you got a desperate team, and I don't even know if Dallas is going to call. They're dumb if they don't, but I don't even know if they're going to call. But now instead of saying, well, we may trade him at the deadline for a fourth-round pick, you've got a desperate playoff team that thinks they're a playoff team, and they talk it in Dallas, and now you've got this gold mine sitting here, Jimmy Garoppolo. The question is, do you have the guts to move him low? What's more important to you, the asset? <sighs> but I'm not giving him away. If the Cowboys called me up and said, we'll give you a third-round pick, I'm saying no. I'm saying absolutely no. friggin' not. I'm holding them Where hostage. do they pick in the second round? Where do they pick in the well, second? Well, the, well, it'll depend on this year. I think this pick will be. Let's say yeah. the Cowboys. Let's say the Cowboys make the playoffs. Well, you know where that pick is, right? That pick's going to be in what the twenties, right. depending on where they're eliminated. Yeah. And then if you're if you're you get Ezekiel Elliott or whatever you get in, and I'm just using his name because they got a couple right. backs, right? And that's what you right. need right now with a little veteran backfield and a guy that you could keep back there and a guy that's been in the league and a, and a guy like Elliott. So I'm sitting here thinking, damn. Oh, would you I, do I'm it gonna, I'm, I'm, I, for a second round pick and a runner? <sighs> I, I would turn around yeah. and be honest with you, Lo. I would do what you you talking about. Pal, I would ask for Pollard in a second round pick. Me too. I okay. think, I think too. he's a more That's, explosive okay. player. And considering what they do with their run game, I think that he's more quick to the hole and explosive. He sits. Uh, he it, fits this scheme. Yes. I'm with you. Now, okay. Yes. I'm not going <laughs> to sleep well when it's offered. I can tell you that. I'm not going to sleep well. But it tells you two things. That one will it'll it'll tell Trey Lance we love you, dude, and you don't have to concern yourself. Although I love the security blanket of Jimmy as a quarterback. I'm greedy as a mofo. Low. I want to yeah. have all these. I want to. But a second rounder and Pollard. I, in essence, should be getting two starters. Okay. And at some point, you're going to move Jimmy anyway. The question is, right. how comfortable are you with Trey Lance this year? And if Trey's gone, how comfortable are you with your backup quarterback then? That's what you got to ask yourself. Because if you, if you make that trade and then Trey gets hurt, now you got the running back and everything else, and you don't got that trigger man. And, and you I don't think the guy... That quarterback's not on this roster. Yeah, and you know what, low about that? Lorenzo Neal, Sean Salisbury, 95-7, the game is you'll never be right. because and The only way you're right is if you trade, Pollard has a monster season, the second-round pick turns into and you go through the playoffs and, and Trey plays a full season. But if Trey were to get hurt, and even if Pollard's playing great, you'll say, we should have never traded for him. I'm just using Pollard's name as an example, whoever they right. trade for. Right. And, uh, well, we, we need Jimmy now, so... That, the, the, those are why the general managers earn the big money, right? The head coaches. No question. Decisions like that, that, okay, we'll listen. But one thing we do know for sure, Lo, whether it's now, before the trade deadline, or this offseason, Jimmy is going somewhere else. The question is, are you willing to buy time and hold on to him? Or is this the most you're going to get for him because a playoff team is desperate and we're all, this is all speculation because we don't have a damn idea if the Cowboys have even called yet. At least I don't over the last hour. I don't know if anybody's called it tonight. But it, it, it's an interesting situation to be in, isn't it, for the 49ers who love to run it. They've got their stud young quarterback, an insurance policy. The Cowboys are desperate. Dak's out for a while. Cowboy fans are going up. Trust me, I'm in Texas, low, and you know they're going crazy. So I just don't know how you weigh it. And if you're the Cowboys, are you going to roll with Cooper Rush? and think that no. he can get it done for six to eight weeks. you got to pick up the phone and call. I, I think that John Lynch has already picked up the phone, or at least the Dallas Cowboys picked up. You have to inquire. You, you have. I mean, you got eight weeks. Jimmy can go in there and hold it down. Jimmy, like you said, he's a smart guy. He's a veteran quarterback. He can pick up systems. The guy knows what to do. He knows how to get the ball out of his hand quick. He, he, can, he, he, is, he is a good quarterback. I think that you're the Dallas Cowboys. You have to consider 
if you're thinking about the playoffs, especially with the clock ticking, and you know that this guy can hold you down for eight weeks and you ain't going to miss the beat, I think that, yeah. I think you make that call. Yeah, Lo, and you think about it. You got the young guy that you you think, okay, we got Trey Lance. We needs the reps. Let's hope he doesn't get hurt. The Cowboys are thinking, oh, well, Dak's already been through his injuries. We've got a full season. And just like that, hand on a helmet, done for the half the season, it appears. And now you're reeling saying, are we really going to cash it in in mid-September? And, or, or do we believe? And here's what it goes to. If we're sitting in a room in Dallas, Low, and you're sitting with the Cowboys, and you're sitting there where nobody else is hearing but Mike McCarthy, the coordinator, Kellen Moore, that group, and Jerry Jones, they're all sitting in a conference and saying, what are we going to do? That's when I got to know that if you could listen to those conversations and they say, well, we got to go get a quarterback, then why the hell did you keep a backup that you didn't trust? See, that's that's maddening to me. It, it is. It's maddening to me. Well, because he's familiar. Screw familiar. If you got to go overpay an extra half a million bucks to keep you out of these situations, the, the damn Buffalo Bills went and traded, I believe, for Case Keenum this offseason. Why? Because they needed that guy because they believe they're going to the Super Bowl. That's what Buffalo thinks. So I, to, to me, you either get a backup, a good backup for two reasons, Low. One is he's a young guy and he's going to replace the aging veteran starter at some point. Or two is I need the, in, and if I'm a playoff team, I need an insurance policy that gives me, I, the reason why, Low, and I don't mean it, I was that guy. And I, I don't mean it's not a pat on the back, but I was the guy who could win you two or three games in a row or start six or eight games and took great pride in it because I felt like I owed it to my teammates. Now, you're going to lose some too, but I know they trusted my game. And those backups along the way. It doesn't matter who it is, the guys, Steve Bono in San Francisco all those years. I mean, guys that we were in those situations that we knew our role. And Jeff Hostetler in New York until he became a starter. And you, you ensure that your team is a playoff team. Backup for Steve McNair, Neil O'Donnell. That's a, you knew he went to a Super Bowl, but you had a great backup in Neil O'Donnell. Steve McNair got hurt. Neil O'Donnell came in. We won five games straight. Guess what? Yep. They went right back to Steve McNair once he got healthy. But you there had a guy go. to come in there and play well. And Shoot. if you don't have <laughs> Steve McNair, you can't get to a Super Bowl. I mean, uh, uh, Neil O'Donnell, because you haven't secured that. That's difference in Absolutely. two or three losses. No so question. If you're, si if you're sitting in, here's the way you got to do it, Low, and for break this down in the last five minutes we have here. If you're the Dallas Cowboys and 49ers, you have to simply ask yourself. Now, Low, I'll tell you when I'd make the deal. If the 49ers were the... Jets, or I'm talking about a team that we know is not going anywhere this year, right? That they're a three and thirteen, a three and fourteen type team, and you've got a backup quarterback that people want. You're going to get a second or third round pick for him. Move him because you know what? You're just going to ride with it anyway. But if you're a playoff team and you say the loss of that guy in the backup who can't come in and hold it down destroys us, it actually kills our chances. You don't want to do that to yourself. That's why the four, That's why Bill Belichick did it with Jimmy. He did it with uh, Brian Hoyer. He, I mean, every single year he'd get a draft and asset and keep rolling them in to protect themselves if something went wrong. Yet Brady only missed one season or Matt Castle. So, low it to me, if you're both of those teams, the Cowboys and the 49ers, and both are now 0-1 on the season, you ask yourself this. You, 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 you say, let me plan for the worst-case scenario for our teams. The Cowboys are in it. You lost your $45 million or whatever quarterback. So now he's sitting in that room and tell me, do you believe Cooper Rush takes you to playoffs? If he doesn't, then why didn't you secure the position in the offseason? If you're the 49ers and you say, are we better off Jimmy as a backup and there in case we need him or a bell cow back in a second-round draft pick if we can milk that from a team like Dallas, are we better off doing that? That's what you have to ask yourself. And if you can't answer it, you don't make the deal. If you can't answer it on either side, you make whatever deal it is or don't make the deal if you're secure and saying, screw it, no running back's going to come in here and make a difference. I like the security blanket. As Jimmy, you don't touch it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to tell you right now, Sean, sure as Monday coming after Tuesday, I guarantee sure as Monday come, sun, Monday come after Sunday, rather, I guarantee the Dallas Cowboys are going to make a move. I'm not going to say it's Jimmy G, but you do not have a good enough quarterback to hold. They are not going to hold serve right there. They are going to go and find a quarterback via trade and somewhere. And I think that Jimmy G has got to be on the short list. It depends on what the Niners ask for. But you're right. The Niners got to make sure they want to make that trade. And so does the Cowboys. But I'm going to tell you right now, the Cowboys, they believe this is a playoff Super Bowl probably Agreed. team. They are going to make some moves. They can't. They cannot stay pa stand back with that quarterback. 
Yeah, imagine having to deal with that for 16 more games. And like I said, this is a – listen, and, and I got a special affinity for backup quarterbacks because I've been around them and I know that they're sitting there, they don't get any reps, and you, you're counted on to go in there and win. So I feel for Cooper Rush. And maybe he'll go in and play lights out, but there's a reason Cooper Rush is still a backup in the league on a consistent basis because – he, he's a back, and that's okay. Hell, we've had a, we've had a bunch of guys. Maybe you got to take Ryan Fitzpatrick off the dog on uh, Thursday night broadcast. Now the pregame yeah. show and see Fitzy in there in Dallas. You get my point, though, and, and, and not to spend belabor the point, but it's going to be a hot button. You've now increased Jimmy Garoppolo's value. The question is, can you afford to part with him? Okay, low overall in the last couple of minutes. It's your platform. Overall thought process on moving forward to Seattle, who's playing now. They got Seattle next week. That will we see quantum leaps in a whole different team next uh, next week? I think we're going to see a faster team, a more aggressive team, a team that's going to make a huge stride in cutting down penalties. Ninety nine yards in penalties is way too much. This San Francisco 49er team will not have as many self-inflicted wounds. They will have less than 30 yards penalties. They have to. This is a mindset. Penalty is a mindset. And offensively, they have to have a collective a collective agreement to say we are a better team than this. Nobody's going to hold us under 10. And for the quarterback, is he has to stay within himself, know when to get down, and understand and trust the process, go to his reads, continue to grow, because he's got a good enough team around him that he does not need to be great. He needs to be efficient. He doesn't have to have the hero syndrome because of all the second-year guys, he's got the best group of players. There is no, no question. question. He does not need to be a hero, take care of his business, and I think he will. And real quick, low before we go, is there somebody that stuck out across the league yesterday as your favorite performance? Saquon Barkley looked like a full-grown man yesterday now. That did do that. That's the guy that did I'm going to see. He was nasty. <laughs> he was nasty. He was nasty. He was one the of the And Justin Jefferson in Minnesota, wide receiver. Dude, that's uh, a, he's a friggin' freak show. A freak uh, show. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I got a little partial. I love that Herbert kid didn't play as well like in second half. Woo! But if I had to give me, if I had to give you an MVP for Week One, I thought it was I thought it was a foregone conclusion. Buffalo watching friggin' the Josh big Allen. boy yeah. run over Josh Allen stiff form, and then Mahomes said, "Hold on, low before you do that," because I, after Thursday night, I was ready to crown Josh Allen MVP because he's too big. He's too strong. He's having fun. They won't punt the ball because they can run the ball now, and they play good defense. You're going to have a hard – if you can't stop – if you don't win on Josh Allen first and second down, you're in trouble because if it's third and two or three, you can't stop them. I'm telling yeah, you, you, that team is going to be the tough out. Oh, man, Josh <laughs> Allen, Mahomes, <laughs> Herbert. That's just the start. It's like, hey, okay, I'll take the third guy, and I got a I'm guy sorry. Who, yeah. who could change the world on the football field. So, boy, it sucks to have talent and be young, huh? Good for those yeah. guys. Hey, Lo, great stuff to Sterling and Cam. Awesome stuff. I appreciate you guys. We'll do it again next week. Dan Devone and Alan Styles are up next. They'll get after it, break down all this stuff on the football field. Lo, I think we're in for one hell of a season. And it's no clear to me the, the, the AFC is a little bit better than the NFC today. Yes. But we're going to overreact until next week, right, to see what happens. <laughs> no question. And it'll be better for the 49ers one game. But you know what? Get back to fixing it. We'll do it again next week. 49ers will take on Seattle. Lo and I will be bad. You'll hear us throughout the lineup, throughout the great Lorenzo Neal. I'll see you back here next week, brother, on, uh, on our football hour. And I love you, and it's always great to be with you. Love you too, brother. Cheers. Have a good one.